Now, the cooling only VRF system, uh, this is the most simplest version of the VRF system. And it's really just uh, a more advanced version of a split AC unit or, uh, or somewhere between a split and a multi split AC unit. And I say that because these, the, uh, the cooling only VRF system can provide cooling to multiple rooms to suit the specific needs of each individual room or zone but they are much more advanced because uh, each unit each indoor unit only connects to a single branch being uh, the flow and return and they also have, have much better control uh, enabling them to match the exact cooling load of the entire building as previously stated these systems use a variable frequency drive to control the speed of the scroll compressor and that's allowing the entire system uh, to match the exact cooling load of the building and this provides uh, huge potential for energy savings and obviously much better thermal control uh, in comparison to a split or multi-split AC unit. Now the cooling only VRF units um, these like I said they, they only provide cooling so they are typically used in warmer climates um, where there isn't the requirement for heating or they could be placed within a building in a cooler climate which only has a need to reject heat um, such as a computer and server rooms. Now these could also be installed within buildings uh, in colder climates but you're, you're most likely going to need an additional heat source um, such as perimeter radiators or, or just a, a combi boiler system although this might not be the best approach because um, you're probably going to get some conflict between the two uh, if the correct controls are not set up and what you don't want to occur is that the heat being generated by the radiator to heat the room is being absorbed by the uh, cassette, ceiling cassette uh, which is providing cooling so the, the two are fighting each other to try and maintain the correct temperature in the room this would obviously waste a lot of energy so uh, this might not be the best approach. So looking at a basic schematic of uh, the cooling only VRF system you can see here we've got the outdoor unit and uh, indoor we've got all these cassettes, ceiling cassettes. You're not limited to these, you could put them into AHUs, maybe fan core units etc uh, but for simplicity I'm just going to stick with these uh, and then notice there's a two pipe system running around uh, around here and off to the outdoor unit. Each indoor unit also only has two pipes and it joins this, this common feed uh, flow and return which supplies and, uh, and takes away the refrigerant. So these are key components of the system and as you can see it's, it's very uh, simplistic and it's just a more advanced version of uh, your, your basic split AC unit providing uh, air conditioning to multiple zones. So if we have a look on the inside of what's really happening in here um, again we've got the outdoor unit here and then we've got the indoor units so you can see that all of these are in the cooling mode so all of them are currently cooling um, to tell the, the outdoor unit that they they're, they require cooling. So uh, we've got the scroll, scroll compressor here and that's compressing all the refrigerant and that's pushing this out and that refrigerant is being pushed off uh, around the system. This is the, the driving force of the refrigerant around the entire system. And uh, that is heading off over to the heat exchanger, which is acting as a condenser, just like a normal um, air conditioning unit. So the refrigerant is leaving the compressor as a high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor. And there's a fan in the outdoor unit, which is sucking air um, in and then going across the heat exchanger and the air, the hot air is then exhausted and rejected out of the top of the unit and as the air comes across the heat exchanger then the, that heat transfer occurs so this uh, refrigerant inside the condenser here starts to cool down and condense into a liquid so by the time it leaves the heat exchanger uh, this will now be a high pressure, medium temperature, saturated liquid. And this refrigerant now flows 
uh, continuously around the building, uh, around this, this common uh, pipework, and all of these units will feed off of this. Now on each indoor unit, and as I said, these are the cassette versions, um, so each one employs a uh, electronic expansion valve. This is currently the most advanced version of uh, a thermal expansion valve, and this is what uh, meters the amount of refrigerant flowing into the uh, the indoor unit and to the heat exchangers. So the electronic expansion valve um, is constantly taking readings for this heat exchanger to, to limit how much refrigerant flows into there to match the exact cooling requirements. On the indoor unit we've also got a fan inside these and that pulls air from within the, the room and pulls it across and blows that across uh, in all directions across this heat exchanger which contains the refrigerant. The refrigerant is always held within it, it never leaves the system. So the air which is sucked in from the room is blown across these coils and as that happens uh, the air becomes cooler so it sucks in warm air from the room and then it pushes that across the coil and it comes out cooler and that is sent around the room to cool it down. So as the refrigerant uh, comes in off this common line and goes through the expansion valve, the refrigerant on the other side is now going to be a low pressure, low temperature uh, vapor liquid mixture. Now as, uh, as the refrigerant passes through this heat exchanger or any of these heat exchangers um, and it begins to leave the unit the refrigerant will then leave and join this pipe as a low pressure, low temperature saturated vapor. And the constant force of refrigerant um, entering into this loop is going to uh, force that refrigerant to continue and circulate back around into the scroll compressor uh, where it will be regenerated and pushed out again to complete the loop. And there you have it, the most simplest version of the uh, cooling only VRF unit. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, uh, subscribe, and share this video with anyone uh, you think it might also help. All right, thanks for watching.